ETA for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how I made socks on the Addy with no short rows and no afterthought heel. Now I'm going to start by working the heel, and I'm using doubled worsted weight yarn here. If you use a single strand of worsted weight yarn, then when the socks stretch, they're kind of see-through. So I'm using two strands, and I'm going to start by casting on all the way around in circular knitting mode. And as always, I like to rotate my Addy to make it easier to crank the handle. I'm going to clear my row counter, and for the heel, depending upon the size of the foot, this is an adult size sock. If you're going to be making this for someone with a wide foot or a thick foot, you're going to need to use a loose gauge with a thicker yarn. Now, I'm going to be making this for a smaller foot. So I'm only going to knit 8 rows for my heel, but you could knit 9 or 10 if you're making this for a larger heel. So now I've knit my 8 rows for the heel of the sock, and I am going to cut my yarn and bring it to the back. And I'm also going to drop that white needle so that that last stitch is worked. And we're going to close up the heel by pulling on the cast on tail and cinching it shut. And it won't go all the way shut right now, but that will at least keep it out of the way, keep the tail out of the way. We just stick the tail right through the hole. And now we're going to work the foot of the sock. So now we're gonna start knitting the foot and I have some doubled worsted weight yarn in a coordinating color. This is actually variegated. And I'm going to start by sliding it under the hook of that first black needle and sinking the needle. And we're going to knit, since this has 22 stitches around, we're going to knit 11 stitches with this yarn and then we're going to cast off and recast on the other 11. It is very helpful that the needles are numbered. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. This is 11 right here. So we're going to take that off for just a minute. And we're gonna make sure the needle sinks and catches that yarn. Now I have one piece of waste yarn on a yarn needle and one piece of waste yarn off of a yarn needle. So with the one on the needle, I'm going to, as we go around, I'm going to pick up the next stitch off of the needle and at the same time, we're going to be recasting on these stitches. So I'm going to bring it back up a little bit. And I'm not going to slide my other piece of waste yarn into the hook of the needle, but rather down around the base, around the, little, the two little red prongs that stick up. Like that. And then I'm going to hook this working yarn under the needle to make the stitch. So that's one stitch. Now usually when you cast on, you put the, the waste yarn around one needle and then behind the next one. So what we're gonna do with this stitch is we're going to pick it up with the yarn needle and hold it on the waste yarn. Then we're going to bring the cast on waste yarn behind that needle behind the red tabs, bring the needle back up, and hook the working yarn with it, sink it down into the machine. So now this stitch is the, here was the one that we went in front of, here's the one we went behind, so we're gonna go in front of this one. We're going to pick up that stitch, hold it on the waste yarn, bring the cast on waste yarn in front of the needle without hooking it, bring the needle up just a little bit, 
catch the working yarn and sink that stitch. So what we're essentially doing is all at the same time, we are casting off or temporarily holding half of the stitches of the heel. We are casting on those stitches that we are eliminating from the circle. And we're also knitting the first round at the same time because we don't want to have to knit half a round and then have a gap between that first half a round and the second half of the round. So we're going to be knitting them all in the same round by working it in this manner. So because my cast on waist yarn just went in front of that needle, it's going to go behind this one. I'm going to pick up the stitch that's already there. Bring that cast on waist yarn behind the red tabs. Bring the needle back up a little bit, hook it with the working yarn, and sink that stitch. But I don't want to sink the stitch after it quite yet. All right. So I'm going to keep doing this until I get back to this first black needle over here, or right here. There should be 11 stitches that were knit with the working yarn, and the other 11 should be held and cast on and re-knit with the new foot working yarn. So here's my last stitch and I'm going to pick it up with my waist yarn. I'm actually going to take the needle off of that waist yarn and this is the last one. It's an odd number, so this one, meaning it's an odd number of stitches that we worked with the new cast on. So this one should go in front, and I'm going to drop that down in there too, and hook that working yarn into the last needle. And now we're going to put this yarn back in the yarn guide, and you're going to knit as many rows to equal the length of your foot minus about two inches for the heel and about two inches for the toe. So on the sock I made earlier, I worked 22 rows in this particular yarn with the gauge that this yarn knits. It was 22 rows to equal the length that I wanted. So what we're doing here is here's the heel, here is the foot, and here's going to be the toe. So here's the stitches for the heel. We've held half of those and recast on half of the stitches for the foot. So we're going to be knitting this piece. And then at the end, we're going to come back and pick these up and knit this way. So you may end up having to try this more than once before you get the right fit. But once you have worked out for the gauge of your yarn and the gauge, the tension that you're using with it, then you can pretty much get the exact same size for the other sock. So I'm going to clear my row counter and I'm going to knit 22 rows. So as I'm going around here, I want to be careful that I don't drop any of the stitches that we cast on. So this is one row, but we already worked one round when we knit across here and recast them on. I'm going to knit 20 more. So now that I've got 22 rows, I'm going to cut this yarn, bring it behind the white needle, and sink that white needle. And now I'm going to go back to this periwinkle blue for the toe. So I'm going to hook this new yarn under the black needle, and I'm going to knit 8 rows with this color for the toe. 
And also, if you like, you can tie these two together in a knot to keep them secure. All right, so there's my eight rows, and now I'm going to cut the yarn again, sink the white needle, and I'm going to pick up all these stitches all the way around onto this yarn. So now to finish up the toe, I'm going to just pull on this yarn right here and close it up. So now I'm going to slip the needle through the middle of that little hole and turn the toe of that sock inside out. Pull on it tighter just to close it up as far as I can. And then I'm going to make a little knot. and just weave in my tail. And I like to weave it in around the, through the cinched stitches that we just closed up. So there's the toe of our sock. Now we're going to close up the heel in the same manner. Pull all those yarn tails out of the way and pull on the cast on tail for the heel to close up the hole. Then I'm going to thread it through my yarn needle right through the center of the hole and tie a knot and weave in the tail as I did before. So now we have our toe, our foot, and our heel and we're going to pick up these stitches back onto the addy to knit the leg part of the sock. So now we're going to put all these stitches back onto the addy and a loom pick is very helpful for this. So I'm going to start by slipping this sock down into the center of the addy, and I'm going to begin with the heel stitches. So I'm going to pull that stitch so that it's long enough I can pick it up, slip the waist yarn out, and slide that stitch under the first black needle under the hook. And I'm going to just pick up all of the stitches from the heel of the sock and hook them underneath the first 11 needles. So now I'm to the last heel stitch. And so I'm going to start picking up the stitches from the foot. Now this one right here is a half stitch that's on my cast on waist yarn because the stitches are actually upside down here. So I'm going to pick it up anyway. And there is one half stitch on this side and one half stitch on this side. So one of these has to be eliminated because then we'll have 12 stitches instead of 11. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to add this one onto the needle and the next one onto the same needle. And 
And at this point, this is a good time to tie together your tail from the heel and your tail from the foot. So I'm also going to pick up all the stitches from the foot of the sock and put them on the needles. Now as you can see here we have this half stitch from this side because the stitches are upside down. And I'm going to put that one on the needle by itself as its own stitch because the other one on this side we combined with the stitch after it so that we have 11 stitches and not 12. So now that we have all our stitches picked up we can start knitting the leg of our sock. So now I'm going to go ahead and start with on the first black needle my regular yarn that I was using for most of the sock and as you'll notice there is a gap here there's a hole so we're going to close up that hole before we start knitting by picking up so as you can see there this is the heel we're going to pick up part of one of the stitches from further from the next stitch over it's actually the stitch that's knit into already from over here and that is going to help us close up the hole and we're also going to close up the other side of the hole once we get around And you'll also need to make sure that this last stitch right here gets hooked and doesn't just sit down here because otherwise the needle will drop and then when the needle comes back up to knit, it'll just push the stitch right off. And you may have a little bit of trouble with this first stitch because it has two stitches on it. There we go. And the leg of my first sock has 19 rows, so I'm going to work a total of 19 rows. And as we get around to this side, there we have our knot right there. We're also going to try to close up this gap as long as the knot is not too tight. We're going to grab this stitch right here and put it over this needle. And this has to be done very carefully. If you do it forcefully, then you could break a needle. So yes, you do have to kind of stretch the knitting a little bit to get it over, but if you do it gently, then it shouldn't break. And since we already have the half stitch on this, sti on this needle right here that we combined with the, the stitch that was there to make the right stitch count, we're going to leave that one alone. And this last needle right here, we're going to pick up the top of a stitch, the top of the next stitch over from the foot part of the sock and add that. Get all our tails out of the way. And there's round one. So what I like to do most of the time, is I'm gonna take my working yarn out, sink that stitch, and tie it in a double knot with the tail that we started this round with, so that it's totally secure. And then I'm just going to keep knitting my 18 remaining rounds for the leg of the sock. Alright, so as you can see on my already finished sock, I have a ribbing here. 
and we have the final knitting yarn that we ended with used to bound to bind off the edge of the sock and keep it stretchy so we're going to need this yarn to bind off with so we're going to pick up all these stitches with a piece of waste yarn so I'm going to bring my working yarn to the back and hold it because we are going to need this do not cut it off of your skein yet and I'm just going to start picking up the stitches all the way around Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and bind off the sock as we work our ribbing. And this ribbing is not hand knit. Instead, we're going to unravel the every other stitch, five stitches down, and pick it up with a crochet hook and work them from the other direction so that they are purl stitches, and that's what's going to create our ribbing. So now to work our ribbing, we're going to start with this last stitch that was knitted, the one that the working yarn is coming out of. I have my crochet hook here and I am going to insert that into the stitch and remove the waste yarn out of that stitch. And so this is going to be a knit stitch. This next one is going to be a purl stitch. So what I like to do is take a stitch marker. The split ring type works well for this, but you can use any kind you want. And I slip it into that stitch that on my hook, take the hook out, and in my first sock I ribbed five rows. So what I'm going to do is take the waste yarn out of the next stitch, and I'm going to unravel five stitches down. So one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to hang on to that little stitch right there, insert my hook from the back, and I'm going to pick up this first ladder. As you can see right here, they're doubled, so you have two strands of yarn for each ladder. I'm going to pick it up with my crochet hook and pull it through to the back. And I'm going to do the same here again. with the next one. And basically we are working, we're picking up a dropped stitch from the back. So then it creates a row or a column, I should say, of purl stitches all the, all the way up. So once you picked up all your ladders, you're gonna come back to the front, take out that stitch marker, put it in the stitch you just ribbed, and pick up the stitch you had before and we're basically going to work a half double crochet in each stitch across. And if you don't crochet, it's not that hard. You're just basically going to yarn over with the needle. You're gonna insert it into that stitch, remove the marker, yarn over again, and pull up a loop. Now the difference between this and a regular half double crochet is that we're going to change it a little bit and instead of yarning over again and pulling that loop through all of those, we're going to take the loop we just picked up, the loop that we just pulled through, and pull it through the other two. So now this next stitch is a knit stitch in our ribbing pattern because we can only do a knit one, purl one rib because with the 22 stitches, you can't really do a knit two, purl one or a knit three, purl one because the multiples don't work out. So we have a knit, a purl, we're gonna do another knit. And so when we do a knit stitch for our ribbing, we're not going to do anything to it. We're just going to work into it, yarn over, insert into the stitch, pull up a loop and pull that same loop through the other two and slide out the waste yarn. Now this next stitch is going to be a purl stitch again. 
So we're going to put the split ring stitch marker into the loop on our hook, pull the waste yarn out of the next stitch, and this stitch marker is going to keep this loop from unraveling. We're going to unravel the stitch five stitches down, one, two, three, four, five, and then pick it up from the back. And then we're going to pull each ladder through the loop on our hook till we get back up to the top. There should be five rungs on your ladder, so to speak. And that is your second column of ribbed stitches, the pearls. And then we're going to put the marker into this stitch, pick up this loop again, and bind off this one. Yarn over, insert into the stitch, pull up a loop, and pull the same loop through those other two loops. So again, this next one is a knit stitch. I'm going to put the split ring stitch marker in the loop on my hook to keep it out of the way. And I'm going to do the same thing into this stitch. Then I'm going to move it to the stitch that I'm on, let go of it, and I'm going to pull the waist yarn out of the next stitch, unravel it five stitches down, one, two, three, four, five, and pick it up from the back and pull through all of those strands of yarn all the way up to the top. Stitch marker goes back in to the stitch. The stitch gets picked up and we bind off again like so. And you're going to keep doing this all the way around. And as you can see, we've already recreated three pearl columns. And so we're going to keep doing that to every other stitch all the way around until we get back to here. So now that I've bound off all the stitches all the way around back to this first stitch, now we're going to join this together. We're going to attach this loop to this last stitch. So to do that, we're going to cut the yarn. And we're actually going to pull this loop on the hook until the tail comes out. And we're going to thread that tail through our yarn needle. And as you can see here on this top edge, it looks just like a regular crocheted edge or a knitted bind off. If you just push those two stitches together, then you'll see the top of this first bound off stitch. And so we're going to insert the needle into the loop that is the top of that bound off stitch. As you can see, half of the stitch recreated. And then we're going to go back down where the yarn originally came from, under back down through the loop that was the top of the stitch and through the back, and pull just a little bit so that it it matches all the other stitches and as you can see the edge of that sock is going to look totally seamless because we have recreated another uh, bound off stitch in between the first and the last stitches. So now we're just going to weave in this tail And once it's woven in, we're going to cut it. And once you've woven in all the rest of your tails on the inside of the sock, then your sock is finished. 
And as you can see here, we have a continuous leg and foot piece, our heel, our toe, and on both sides, you can see there's no hole where that the intersection of these three pieces meet. Whereas usually there is a hole there in most methods of making socks on the Addy. In some methods, there are also a row of holes all the way down to the heel, and this does not have that. We also have our ribbing, just like a regular sock, if you were to hand knit this, without actually having to hand knit the ribbing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.